I really love your kitchen, Jeannie. This is fantastic. My dream. Ooh, okay. Here's my three ovens. Welcome to the Italian Wine Podcast Lockdown Series. Every Monday we'll be connecting with Italian wine people. Join us to find out what they're doing and drinking today. Hello, Jeannie. Good to see you. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you. It's quite interesting to be in this uh, so-called lockdown series when in Hong Kong our lockdown is a little bit, uh, a little bit more, uh, how should I say, flexible as it is in, uh, in Italy. But anyway, uh, most people are staying at home. Uh, I, I'm sure yeah. you spent a great deal, much more time at home than, uh, than you have in the past in Hong Kong. So I've been cooking a lot of food. Um, every day is sort of a new recipe. Uh, but the one that I wanted to show and share today is something really simple and something that I think um, anyone can do. And you know, lots of people love eggs. They love eggs poached, fried, scrambled, or, you know, but the way that we have it, um, you know, the Korean way of having eggs is a kind of a special steamed egg in a clay pot. So right behind me, you'll see in a bit, um, I have been boiling for about 30 minutes special Korean base stock. Yeah, so let me let me just share with you um, the very basic ingredients, okay? It's, it's very simple. The main ingredient is egg. And to give it the fluffiness and the lightness, you need the, the broth or the dashi. And if you don't have Japanese or Korean uh, dashi and you can't make it, then just use chicken stock or vegetable stock. It's equally good. It gives that savory umami contrast. And because you have eggs in it as well and it's steamed, it really accentuates that um, umami taste and gives out a, uh, give, gives a lot of, I, for me, um, a kind of comfort, um, comforting feeling that goes straight to my stomach. Um, so. It's eggs, dashi, that's the main. But then the third is actually the way you salt it. So if you don't have uh, fish sauce, yep. you can easily use um, salt. There's a lot of white wines from Italy that I think would go really well uh, with this dish. However, um, the one thing you have to remember, like all Korean and Chinese food, sure. we don't eat just this dish by itself. So I prepared a little meal tray for you to get an idea of how we would eat this dish because it's considered one of the side dishes. So if this was my okay. main source of protein, I would um, have this for lunch or breakfast because it's a very light dish and with okay. rice and some vegetables, right? Oh, so so you, don't have, you don't have wine with lunch, uh, Jeannie? <laughs> <laughs> of course, well. I'm cooking and um, I'm having a Vete San Leonardo Savino Blanc. So. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> yes. Me, I'm having a Canel Bosco Cuvée Prestige. Francia Corta, Let toujours Francia Corta. <laughs> Here it is. I opened it um, just before I started. So, I'm going to put this on this side. Okay. So, now um, what we have to do is. Um, we have, I have six eggs and the proportion six. really varies. You can make four eggs, you can make six, you can make eight. Um, and it's, it's really up to you and how many people. I normally do, we have six people in my family. I have four daughters. So I usually proportion kind of one egg per person. One okay. egg per person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and when you do six eggs, uh, normally uh, I measured it already, but the broth is usually between one to one and a half cups. Um, and the only already. thing I need to do is fluff these eggs uh, and beat them, you know, uh, until they're the consistency I want. Now, the difference between, and I brought this strainer here because uh, chawan mushi, the Japanese version of a steamed egg, is usually yep. in a ramekin, in this kind of ramekin, and it's steamed. Um, and if I run the egg through the strainer, then the texture of the egg becomes really fine. Nice. Um, but the Korean version is actually a little bit rougher because we stir, and as we will, as you will see, uh, the texture is a little bit richer and, and bigger. Mm. Now, if you want also a, a runnier, more soupy type of a steamed egg, then you can add more broth. It's really up to you. So I'm gonna beat this fairly well, about a few minutes, and 
saltiness also depends on you. I really love your kitchen, Jeannie. This is fantastic. My dream. Oh, okay. Here's my three ovens right here. Mamma <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I love it. <laughs> Wonderful. Actually, okay, JC, you're going to laugh, but I have two kitchens. I have another kitchen in the back, <laughs> oh, which is for wok frying and um, kind of smelly Korean food. So this is usually like when we have friends over. Okay. <laughs> So, so this is why you don't mind to stay at home a little bit during the lockdown. It allows you to explore your creative side and uh, <laughs> go absolutely crazy in the kitchen. I love it. I really love it. Okay. Now we have uh, fish sauce. Again, like I said, you can use salt. Uh, you can use soy sauce. You can use salted fermented uh, shrimp. So mm. depending on how salty you like it, I usually put for six eggs, I put... Um, one and a half to two tablespoons. So it's, you see how it's not quite full? That's one. Um, and around two, just, but not quite two, not to make it okay. too salty. I usually use um, this to make soup for six people, Korean soup, like uh, tofu soup. Uh, I would make um, soybean soup, beef stew. And we have it in this pot, we bring it to the table, and then we serve it in uh, soup bowls. So you just stir. So the time now, um, I can see, is uh, it takes about seven minutes. And, seven minutes. Yeah, and the only reason I'm not putting the lid on yet is because I just want to make sure that it doesn't, nothing sticks once it starts boiling a little bit more. And you can see that the egg is kind of getting into a thicker consistency, then okay. I'm going to be ready to put the lid on because this has a steam effect. Now, oh, if you don't have this, what, if you don't have this pot, then the question is, what do you do? So you'd use um, what the French call the bain marie or the hot water um, method where you put the ramekins or a, uh, some sort of, um, you know, heated pot into uh, water so that it's actually bathing in water. Oh, nice. uh, or you can put it in your steamer, but the idea is that um, what you really want to do is the last uh, three minutes, you want it to steam and kind of fluff up. So it's a beautiful golden color right now. And I'm just letting it stir. So it will be cooking for about, I've been stirring for about a minute or two. So once I put the top on, I'm going to do another three, four minutes, and uh, you'll see how uh, this pot does its magic. Wonderful. Wonderful. And that's it. Ooh, do you want to take a peek? Okay, Wonderful. so this is a little too runny, and um, if you look, you can see that it's starting to cook all around. Now, oh, what I'm going to do is just see. Yep. So all around it, it's still starting to, to cook. So I think I'm going to give it another two more minutes. So um, perhaps, um, I, you know, when I was in the lift uh, coming to, uh, to my flat now, I spoke mm -hmm. with someone in the, in the lift uh, and people said, oh, I cannot wait to go back to work in my office because when I work <laughs> at home, I cannot concentrate at all. And so yeah. I'm curious, you must do a, quite a bit of work from home yourself. So how do you concentrate when you work from home? Uh, well, I guess I'm used to it because in fact, my daytime job was usually being a mother <laughs> I see. And, um, and everything else. And so um, I'm used to doing work uh, as my family will tell you, on the airplane, on trains, uh, you know, in a taxi, uh, wherever I can find the time because time was so precious. So um, I never had a real issue wherever I was working. I mean, I could be, you know, anywhere. And that's why I was able to also work from uh, airplanes and, and travel as much as I did because I could still write, I could still, um, you know, contribute articles. And, um, and what's your secret? 
What's your secret to be effective in this uh, context? Be very busy and have lots of children because they will they will <laughs> force you to be a good time management person from the very beginning. Because if you have four small kids when they were young, my kids were um, four children under the age of four years old. So if I didn't manage my time, there's nothing I could get done. <laughs> In fact, when you uh, you did your um, research project, it was a thesis in those days when you did the Master of Wine. You you already yes. had uh, the four children, no? Yes, yes. And so yes. this must have been a very intense uh, moment uh, to be able to complete the thesis and take care of these uh, four children. Mamma mia. Well, for me, the thesis was the easy part because I like really? writing, huh? as you know, right? Yes, so the thesis yes. is mostly about research and writing. So that was, I thought, pretty easy. <laughs> oh. It was the studying um, and the having to learn about winemaking, viticulture, all the technical things and all the tasting components of it that was um, quite challenging. And I think that took a lot of time. So I had no social life. Uh, outside of family, I just didn't see anybody probably for about four years, mm -hmm. four to five so, years. So studying and, for the Master of Wine is a kind of a lockdown practice, if you will. Yeah, it is. But I was yes. working as well. So my day job was writing articles, teaching. I had, uh, at that time, I was running the Fine Wine School, uh, yes. which I then merged with Berry Brothers. And so I had a school I was writing at that time, I think about four or five different wine columns. It was yes. really crazy. Um, and working on my book, and then also then at night I would study uh, for the Master of Wine. So, okay, I'm the, so, so your secret to keep focus is to be busy because you have no choice and you have to focus. And so, yeah, uh, and so you really use your time really well. Yeah, 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 exactly. Ooh, do you see? Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to give it a few more minutes because I think um, I want it to be I want it to be a little runny and soft because okay. it's steamed, um, but at the same time, um, I don't want it to be too soupy. It depends on how you enjoy it. Because sure. if you think about it, it's steamed egg with broth and a, and a lot of umami flavor going on. Wonderful. Yeah, no, for me, uh, umami flavor. I really, really believe uh, a fantastic French Accorta with uh, uh, 50, 70 months on the lees, uh, even some bottle aging would be really fantastic Ooh, with such a dish. That's no? a good thing. I'll be right back. Oh, I hope you have a French Accorta. <laughs> ah, three ovens, wonderful wine cellar, and Bella Vista, wonderful. <laughs> Such a cold, uh, so, I think you're absolutely right. It could go very well, you know, and um, it would be wonderful. But I have to show you the whole plate of how we would eat this dish, right? Absolutely. Because we wouldn't just be eating this. This would be, like I said, this size with six eggs would be for six people. Yes, of course. I'm going to show you how we would traditionally eat this. So first, let's take a look. Oh, do you see that steam? Mm, wonderful. Wonderful. And what we do is add spring top, onions. Spring onions on top. What we, I'm going to bring one tray of a typical Korean um, plate. If I were having this thing, and, yeah. and typically, like I said, something like this without any meat or fish means that um, it is going to be uh, a lighter meal. So in Korea, you might have actually this whole plate uh, for breakfast. Um, and the only so, thing I'm missing here is a little, little bit of soup. So I just want to thank everyone in Italy uh, for making great wines because uh, you can pair it with Korean food, with Chinese, uh, with a lot of different Asian cuisines. And don't be afraid to experiment. Thank you, Jeannie. It was fantastic. Thank you so much. Chin yeah. chin. Chin chin.
See you next Monday for another virtual wine journey Italian wine podcast lockdown series.